What is up, Regenerators? Welcome back to another episode of Regeneration TV. Another wonderful Wednesday that me and you get to uh, get together and talk a little bit. Now, a couple weeks ago, as you saw on, on last week's video, we had our, our uh, Super Sabbath. And it was beautiful. It was amazing being on stage, worshiping with everybody, and also seeing other churches uh, worshiping, but most importantly, the message. Now, Helmer Sr. came all the way from Virginia to give the Bay Area a message about prayer. I wanted to talk to you about that and dedicate this video just for that because it made such a big impact in my life. It motivated me, it sparked a new fire in me, and get a little personal with it, I previously been having a problem. I've been having a problem with fear. Now, uh, it's been months that I've been having anxiety attacks, or yeah, I'll say anxiety panic attacks about death. It's been over um, overtaking my life. It's been uh, consuming me on a daily basis, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to kick it, and. Honestly, I was desperate reaching out to my pastor and just venting out with uh, to him about it uh, helped a little bit and He gave me some advice to dig a little bit deeper and Into what was fearing me and how to prepare for it and a lot of people say it's a midlife crisis thing, but it's not it was something different uh, I felt like God was calling me to do something. He's not gonna put you through something unless he wants you to grow from it or to share what you're going through. Now, the thing about death is not whether I'm saved, if I'm going to heaven or hell, it's not that. Uh, for me, like reality is reality. It's like this life, I know how it feels. I know what I'm living. I know what I'm doing and that makes me feel like I'm in control. The thing that worries me is I don't know how death is gonna feel like and I don't know what the afterlife is gonna feel like, what to expect. And as much as the Bible tells you, and as you can see from our classes, that the Bible tells you exactly how heaven's gonna be like and how death is gonna be like. But if I, didn't, if I don't experience it, I most likely am fearing it. And as time goes on, it feels like it's getting closer and closer and closer. And I have no control over it. What ha have I learned is pretty much that living a life day to day is the best thing to do. Personally, for me, stop thinking about the future because the future is not promised. Start thinking about now. If I would die today, any minute now, or if I would die tomorrow, because nobody knows when you're going to pass away or nobody knows when Jesus is going to come. But what you do know is if you're living a good life, if you're living it, um, following God's commandments, and also bringing people to the good word. That's what you do know. If you're doing something at that moment or day to day that is pleasing to God, that's what you do know. So that's why I'm actually living life day to day and stop thinking about the future. Um, it's been helping me a lot. How I got to that conclusion was with a lot of prayer. Now, I always prayed beforehand, quick prayers here and there, uh, like anybody else, like, oh, prayer at night, prayer in the morning, and praying for the food. What happened Super Sabbath was amazing because the message that uh, Pastor Helmer Sr. brought to us was, it was, well needed for all our churches. As you can tell, prayer in the church is 
going downhill. At prayer service, you have fewer and fewer people coming because it's not the actual service. It's not, it's not gonna have music. It's not gonna have anything, uh, it's not gonna have a lot of people in it. And some people, let's be honest, think it's boring. And trust me, I was like that and I believe that, that hey, it's not even a service. Why am I gonna go? But believe it or not, it's the most important service that you can attend. Prayer is the direct communication you have with our God. You can ask Him for things. You can thank Him for things. Or you can have a conversation with Him on a daily, to day, a day-to-day basis and build your relationship with Him. Uh, after the service, I started praying a lot more. I started praying in depth more and more for an extended period of time. As I woke up, I made sure that I thanked them for my life. I thanked them for picking me out of many to waking me up, to keep on going with our spiritual goals and to please Him and bring people to the Word. And then I, and as I eat, I ask them to bless the meal that I'm gonna eat, to bless the, uh, the food that's going inside of me and make it be nourishing to my body. And then at night, to thank Him for my day, to thank Him for everything He done, to forgive me for all the shortcomings I had, and also to just being there with me on, a, on my walk, my spiritual walk. It sounds simple, but it's more uh, intimate when you do it. Now, how I got out of my rut, how I got out of my rut was with something that Helmer Sr. said, and it was pretty much about the story about the man that had a demon-possessed kid, and he was frustrated and exhausted because he didn't know what to do. Uh, And finally, he heard that Jesus was close by. He went to go meet Jesus, but found his disciples. Disciples had the full authority to bring out demons out of people and were an expert at it. But this was a different kind of case. They tried their best and they didn't do it. Jesus came over finally after um, going off, I believe, to prayer. And he came and he asked them pretty much, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we try to take out this demon, but it doesn't work. And then Jesus said that this demon has to be taken out by prayer and uh, fasting. The two most important things, I think, prayer and fasting. Now, if you're going through anything that I went through, I recommend definitely prayer and fasting. It's going to help you out a lot. It's going to get you through it. It's going to keep you motivated. And believe it or not, it's going to feel like a fresh breath of air. I don't know if you've ever been in the pool and been underwater so long that when you come up, you just gasp. That's how it's going to be. It's going to spark something inside you. It's going to motivate you. It's going to keep you going. Now, now if you're having any troubles and you want to email us or message us, we're there for you. We'll pray for you. We'll guide you. We'll help you through things because you're not alone. You're absolutely not alone. But if you can get anything out of this is go back to your roots. Go back to prayer. It's going to be the best decision you ever make. Other than that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Future events coming up 
is our raffles going on for the iPad and also the AirPods. It's $5 a ticket. It's uh, six tickets for $20, I believe. And, and then we have our New Year's, uh, New Year's bike race. Here we'll start from Halia Park, come all the way down to Cochrane. There's a park uh, behind the, the Target over there. So we're gonna bike 16 miles. First, second, third place gets a prize. Be there, that's gonna be on January 1st. Other than that, stay motivated and remember you have to die from your old self to live your new life and be regenerated. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.